So what do you do for like when you when you're um on your off time here? Um, typically just chilling. Like me and my girl will go to the beach or you know go on a hike. Probably do a little bit of like for me, I I spend most of my free time drawing. Yes, yeah, was gonna ask you. Yeah, so what types of drawing do you do? Not me asking. Um, a lot of free hands or do digital or graphic. I mean, a lot of the stuff I do right now is just gonna be all on my iPad. So okay, so your styles. Um, yeah, because this is very efficient. You can do a lot of stuff very fast compared to on actual paper. Mm -hmm. So I'll do a lot of, like, um, mocking up of stuff on my iPad, and I print it out, and then I'll redraw it um, if I wanted to make, like, a drawing drawing. Because, yeah, it all, it all depends, you know, depending on what the reason is. So lately, most of the drawings I've been doing have been related to tattoos, so it's mostly stuff that I'm designing to be tattooed as opposed to stuff that I'm designing just to create art. Is not everything translates well to a tattoo. Sometimes you got to make little changes so that it can be uh, tattooed. Right. So, like... Um, for example, this hibiscus. <laughs> if it was a lot bigger and I wanted to do a different kind of an aesthetic, I could, you know, incorporate a lot more details because of the size. But when I'm working with a smaller scale piece, you have to almost dumb things down mm -hmm. so that you can get all the important information and then you can go in there and stylize it. So it's sometimes a different approach depending on... And you don't want it to bleed, design. right? What's that? The bleeding or like the, you know... Oh, uh, bleeding's going to happen. I mean, it... Or when it comes smears with the smearing. overall tattoo techniques. All right. You know, how well can you tattoo? Because if you're an efficient tattoo artist, then there's going to be very minimal bleeding. And what are you doing freehands up mostly? Is it animals or flowers? Um, or... Well, I don't think I do anything freehand. Most artists, if they're doing anything freehand, it's going to be something fairly basic. And if it isn't something basic, then it's because that's all they draw. Mm -hmm. So... I really don't do anything freehand anymore. It just takes too much time. The whole process of mapping stuff out from, you know, like, do, like you ever seen, like, when people draw heads from scratch, you do a circle. Right. Yeah. More circles and lines, all that kind of bullshit. Um, so I was taught how to do all that stuff. It's just at this point, I, I don't like spending, you know, two hours oh, before I can actually get into drawing something. Right. So I know I can do it, so I don't always practice those fundamental techniques. But it is important to practice. But yeah, if I was to do anything freehand, like truly freehand, it would be something that's going to be, um, like like how you're saying, like an animal, mm. or it's going to have to be something that's going to be um, easier to freehand. You know, like an animal, right? If it's a bear, there's no, you know, a bear could look all kinds of different ways. It doesn't have to look a certain kind of way. But if I'm trying to do like a portrait, let's say, of like uh, Ariana Grande, right? Mm. Her upper lip or if I her ear or something, it's right. going to be noticeable because you know what Ariana Grande looks like. Right. So there's not a whole lot of room, like portraits or faces like that, because, you know, people are going to know who that person's supposed to be. Yeah. I'm literally flying out today. That's why I was like, I didn't, I don't want to get to something too elaborate either. But like I said before, we can always like extend it if I ever come back. But yeah, for sure. The way things are going to this world, I want to see the rest of it as fast as possible. I feel you. When did you start learning your technique or your style of tattoos? Because I noticed you do have a style. Well, I would say, and most professional tattoo artists that don't have a big ego would say the same thing, and it's that like. A lot of times you don't have a style until you've been tattooing for over 20 years because it takes a very long time to truly cultivate something that is unique. Like currently, I would say I don't have a style. I would say I'm still um, exploring what I'm good at and still trying to find something that I can claim is my style. Like I like to do a lot of black and gray uh, stuff you know, fine line kind of stuff, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it's my style just yet. I could still easily see myself transitioning and doing like straight just uh japanese traditional you know well i saw that the anime yeah there's still a lot of um things to learn before i, I could say that i have a style but uh no it just kind of comes from what i like the most you know what do i think looks cool what do i think uh looks the best on skin i don't think color looks great exactly even on, i was just about to ask you that on uh, people yeah, even color. On white people i don't yeah. like anything tattoos. past olive complexion i think it's not yeah unless you're absolutely transparent yeah then i still don't like color it fades period. too much. And I just think aesthetically, look like just aesthetically, people yeah. with black and gray tattoos, they look cleaner, look the coolest. Yeah. 
especially if you got any kind of pigmentation in your skin, like even if you're just tan, like if you're a white person that's tan, it's like, man, there's no reason for you to have color. It's just yellows are going to turn to nothing. Right, right. Pinks are going to fade out. You know, certain colors just do not age very well, especially if you're going to be in the sun or if you have a certain skin tone. And then have you been um, dealing with any of the glow in the dark inks? Uh, one of our sister shops uh, has glow in the dark ink that they'll use. Uh, it's cool, you know, but it all depends. It would be one of those things that I would do if, like, let's say the client came in, had their own ink, exactly. you know, because I'm not going to go and buy it yeah. uh, just to do a glow-in-the-dark tattoo mm. once in a while. But, yeah, yeah no, it's, it's cool stuff. I don't know much about the, the technology, like what, ex- like what exactly is in the ink. And how long it do, lasts. Or right. even just how safe that shit is. Right. Because, uh, I don't know what the fuck is in that. Because tattooing is pretty safe. So you're using new needles, right? Yeah, hypothetically, you know, if the tattoo artist, <laughs> if the tattoo artist gives it's not repackaged shit, yet. Yeah, yeah, if the tattoo artist cares and you know ain't some filka, then right. Yeah, there's nothing to worry. about. I did my due diligence as a Google guy, and I went online, and I was like, okay, well, I'm hoping and praying this is, you know, he's a using, clean shop, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. That's uh, that's a, that's the first thing you're taught as a tattoo apprentice is how to keep shit clean. You have to do at least in the state of Hawaii. There's an online class we take, and uh, that class teaches you everything you need to know about how to not spread, you know, grow shit on people or whatever. Keep shit clean. Are you still working underneath any other, um, like other? Big Brother tattoo artist? Uh, no, not anymore. I mean, I would say that my boss and my other co-worker that's in here with me teach me a lot when I, you know, ask for help or they show me cool little tips and tricks. But um, no, I would say for the most part now, it's just all me just figuring shit out, you know? Even when I was an apprentice, my dad showed me how to set up my tattoo machine, how to set up my station, and then that was it. I had to figure everything else out. I just spent a lot of time on Instagram looking at tattoo artists, seeing how they tattoo, seeing how they set up, and I just tried to recreate it as best as I could because I wanted to be, you know, professional. I didn't want to look like who doesn't know what they're doing. And what do you notice? What's your first, I guess the first thing you noticed that made the most sense? Well, in tattooing, I would have to say, if you can't draw it, you cannot tattoo it. And there are a lot of tattoo artists that I see that they might be tattooing for 30 years. They can't draw some of the things that they, you know, are going to tattoo. Mm. I think sometimes it's just a matter of the client wants what they want, you know? Like, maybe, maybe you came in today... And I don't know how to draw black and gray realism, right? Like maybe I'm a certain other kind of artist. And I was like, fuck it, I need money. So I'll do this tattoo anyway, you know? Oh, God. So there are a lot of artists that do shit like that. <laughs> and then the tattoo comes out looking like shit. And it just comes down to their drawing skill, you know? Like they ain't put in the time to draw or to learn how to draw. So did you pull that um, this tattoo from a book? or? So this was from, I took a real hibiscus that I had a like a reference image for. Oh, okay. And then I recreated it. You traced it. More or less. I mean, I, I took a rough outline, but then I changed a lot about, like, the structure of the flower. All I wanted was just to have a real hibiscus to look at. Right. And everything else, I just kind of go in there and make little artistic changes to the petals to make it look more animated or to give it more, you know, wave to it or something. Other times, if I'm doing, like, an, anime, an actual anime tattoo, then those are the ones where I will go and just take an image from the actual show and redraw that, you know, trace it, and then make it, like, actually tattoo. Nice. Yeah, um, the sneakers I have on a Reebok, and they're, um, I think they're bait or something. It's, like, one of the famous anime. Oh, okay. And the, um, they're glowing in the dark, actually. Oh, nice. So I was walking down the street. They were like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then my son, he loves anime. So I think that I would love to do something like that. Because I noticed you had that in, and I was kind of getting excited. I was like, wow. <laughs> I respect a lot of um, tattoo artists that... You know, because, you know, Japanese animation is gorgeous. Yeah, for sure. Well, you can, if you can do any of that, you're in the right row. And I love the tigers. There were tigers in there, right? Yeah, tigers. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love the tiger. So how many tattoo artists are in here? Currently, there are three of us. There's my boss, my coworker, and myself. And then we just took on an apprentice. And there was supposed to be actually a new guy starting today. He was supposed to be in here already. I don't know what the fuck happened to him. Chilling. Yeah, <laughs> Sunday fun day. I don't know, man. What? Right. Quiet quitting as well. Yeah. Oh, it's it's freaking annoying. Blows my mind. I, I don't know. 
But yeah, no, currently there's just three of us, and then my boss will have um, guest artists come through oh, nice. periodically throughout the year. You know, sometimes they'll come for just a week, other times they'll come and stay for, you know, a couple months. Um, so we normally have a nice little rotation of artists that can do different stuff. And how long has the shop been open for? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, my boss said he's owned it since 2012, 2013. Nice. Um, it was originally owned by a different artist. Who sold it and then my boss bought it from him. That's how my boss has gotten all of his shops. He he's gone and bought other shops from, from people that are yeah you know giving up on it and he comes in and revitalizes the shit and makes it a functioning business again. Yeah, he's got that hustle in him. Yeah, he just got to make sure he. I would say a recommendation would, would be to go on to Google and re-verify the location because I was walking around by the McDonald's upstairs. Oh yeah, but it's cool. I mean, I'll do. No, a, we've heard it from we've heard that from other people. I'll do a Google review and a TripAdvisor. That's why I'm here. I mean, I'm oh, gonna do all that. I, I have to. That's that. the whole point because I'm gonna do a digital, you know, a trail of me. Oh you know, okay. It's kind of walking around and being around. <laughs> yeah, no, people don't realize those fucking they watch reviews that. make a big difference. They really they, do. The little things like that make a big difference. Because yeah, I, I always say tattoo shops near me or, you know, something to eat near me, Jamaican food near me, and I look yeah, at yeah. that, and if I don't see what I need to see, I'm out. Especially with TripAdvisor with the hotels. Oh, okay. I didn't see, I didn't understand how powerful those were, but they're, you know, they're a little bit more powerful than Google reviews in my opinion. Sure. That's like the vein of their business. Yelp, you know, back in the day, Asia, I use a lot of Yelp reviews, but Yelp is not, you know, it's no, not Google. Yelp is, yeah, it's, not, it's not reliable. Yeah, it's not, and they, you know, people pay for that. Yep. But I think it's cool. I mean, you guys pay a lot of attention to detail. Like laying on this table, I'm looking up and I'm like, wow, the ceilings are painted. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it's definitely a, a shop that, like, I've liked because, like, my, the shop I came from at my dad's place is very old school. Not, Wait, where is he at? He's back home on the Big Island. He's retired now. He's what just, Bigger Island? Uh, it, well, it's called the Big Island. It, it's called the... The name of it is Hawaii, okay. which I know can be confusing because the state <laughs> is also Hawaii. But, um, yeah, it's the island of Hawaii, but everybody just calls it the Big Island. So you're like a, t- a complete like Hawaiian kid. Oh, yeah. No, I was born wow. and raised here, dog. I, uh, oh, wow. Be like some Midwest kid. <laughs> no, yeah. I was hey, born... Up, like... I was born on... I was born, uh, what do you call it, Maui Island, and then uh, my oh, parents wow. moved over to the Big Island when I was like one, maybe two. And so are you a surfer as well? Oh, obviously. yeah, yeah. Born and raised, doing all that kind of water shit. Like, it was, uh, my mom went and learned how to be a lifeguard, so then me and my <laughs> brother went and became lifeguards, like junior lifeguards, because they got classes that, for that that you can take. Was raised, you know, hunting and fucking surfing, fishing, spear diving, all that kind of shit. It's just, uh, it's just a part of the culture, you know? At least if you're, if you're a part of the working class kind of, uh, upbringing, you know, working class, maybe impoverished kind of area of economic background, mm-hmm. You tend to do a lot more of that kind of outdoorsy shit compared to like my girlfriend. She was raised kind of middle class in a nice area. She ain't, she don't know nothing about what it is to be like a real local oh, person wow. here. I tease her all the time about it because like uh, we have our own way of speaking here. It's kind of like uh, how black people have ebonics. Uh-huh. Uh, it's very similar. Very right. Similar. It's like that TV show. I forget. It's on Netflix with those kids that are always looking for treasures. What is it called? Into right. the deep or something. Oh, oh, uh, oh. ah, they're, they're, um, yeah, they have their own little, their own little slang. Oh, okay, yeah, but yeah, same thing because it's because it's townies versus like. The, oh, okay, okay, I, I know what you're saying, but no, I, yeah, same sentiment. We're like, we got a uh, oh, wow. back in the sugarcane mill days, right, right, back in the God, what was it? I think 1700s. Yeah. When uh, maybe 1800s, when Hawaii was the biggest sugar cane sugar cane distributor in America, uh, I believe it all started during the Civil War times because uh, they couldn't get sugar from the South. The North couldn't get sugar from the South no more, right? Because they're at war. So they end up coming and getting all their sugar from here, and so they had to get the man force, the manpower to do that. And they brought in Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Filipino people, Portuguese people. You know, all these different ethnicities to come and work in the fields, mm. and none of them spoke the same language, right? Koreans can't speak the Chinese, so they had to come up with their own way of speaking, and that's called pidgin. So, here locally, you know, other local people, we speak pidgin. It's got a little bit of a twang to it. We don't say the, we say duh. duh. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, what's that over there? You know, we don't, there's no T's. Almost all T's get taken out and just replaced with D's. Oh, wow. Um, and then do you guys have your own, like, Pigeon like food and like oh well, yeah the local food the local you know it's Hawaiian soul food is, oh, is exactly wow. what it is it's just taking elements from one culture and another culture kind of combining it and then you get 
you know, like Korean fried chicken, right? Uh -huh. Korea didn't know nothing about fried chicken, but when the Korean War happened, he had U.S. soldiers go over there and can show them how to fry chicken up. Wow. And so now here we went and took Korean fried chicken, and then you, they just soak it in um, like katsu sauce, the Japanese uh, like ketchup, basically. Oh, nice. And so there's all these like cool little things that have come up from from that era. What would you say that is the, demogra the demographic breakdown of oh. Honolulu? Because it's a lot. I'm just like, what? I'm seeing Chinese. Yeah, Korean on this people. island, it's very mixed. Yeah. Uh, the, even like I'm not even used to it because the other islands, like where I'm from, you're mostly going to see Japanese, Filipino, and Portuguese people, uh, at least in the town I'm from. Uh, you're going to see not a whole lot of white people. If they are white, they're going to be mixed white. And mixed white meaning like... Like it's going to be white and Japanese, okay. white Chinese, white and Hawaiian. And how far are we from those places? Like on a plane? Because, you know... Uh, like, we're right in the middle of the Pacific. So exactly. it's going to be like it's gonna be like six hours to Japan <laughs> or six hours to L.A. Like almost either oh my way. God, bro. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like America, you know, growing up, going to an Ivy League school and being a grown up and don't even know that. It's just fucking yeah, yeah. baffles the shit out of me. And like I told you before, I've been to Cambodia. I've been, you know, I've right, been to right, Chicago. Right. And I'm just angry because, you know, I knew it, but right. I didn't know it. No, I get what you mean. So you you kind of mad. You know. Right. But it's because. Until it, you do it. Exactly. Because if you think about it, it's like, since I'm halfway here, I might yeah. just keep going back there. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, why the fuck want to go back there? No, I get what you mean. So it's like, you are now being halfway here, is, is, you save a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm, shit. So, I, you know, that's why I was like, eh, so do you want to go back home? <laughs> like, it's just. That's awesome. So pigeon is the yeah. well. Oh, uh, so I've also encountered uh, God. Who was it? There was this uh, black lady uh, months ago. Came in. She was talking about wanting to move here because that, that was the reason why her and her son came here to vacay was to see. You know, maybe they want to move out here. Where it's pretty a... affordable compared to a lot of places in America right I now. I forget. Yeah, I forget where she was coming from. And so that's what we had talked about. Was like, well, for one, if you got the funds, that's a big. You know, like. Not a lot of people got the funds. So right. if you got the funds, that's a big one already. You got knocked out. And then two, I explained to her, as long as your son was raised with any kind of respect, any kind of understanding of respect, he will be totally fine. And in my experience, as long as you got a little bit of tinge to your skin, as long as you aren't white, you're going to be totally fine here. Like the fellow other local people will have a much easier time embracing people that are not white. It's just the way it's always been here. A lot of resentment towards yeah. white people, you know, for the same reasons anybody else got resentment towards white people. So, it, uh, if you know well, how there's to... A lot, there's a lot of energy in the air here, but, you know, I felt, sure. too, you know, I'm, I'm going to be who I am regardless. And I know, you know, I'm very different. I mean, people come up to me, you know, I just I dress completely different. You know, I mm -hmm. wear blazers and shit. So people are coming, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to the sick room, I'm going to dress like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't the best experience, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, my point to you is that, you know, I just did it just, you know, chits and giggles. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm here, so I'm going to just review it. You know, I'm going to do that. Oh, I feel you. I, you know, it, it reminds me of any other, you know, standard steakhouse. You know, I wasn't right, impressed. Right, right. Was, you know, it wasn't Wolfgang Pucks, it wasn't nothing <laughs> like that. But I just feel like, you know, like you already know, like the energy is just, I didn't know you guys have, you guys have like this little chip on your shoulder. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of that. There's yeah, of that. but I kind of like it, though. Yeah, it's a little bit it of gives an me, edge. It gives me city. It gives me city. Sure, and sure. And it's not what people would expect. Yeah. It's not what I expected. No, no, You know, no, for no. Hawaii, I just thought it was going to be a bunch of old white people walking around. <laughs> I thought it was just my, like Miami or like right. Fort Lauderdale or some shit. No, but, I But everything's you. changing. Since the pandemic, everybody has rotated and we, we all are um, reclaiming our spaces in places like Honolulu. Like, I mean, I look at the prices in some of these... Uh, Buildings. I mean, I'm sure more. Some buildings have more amenities than others, but it's pretty affordable. Well, it all depends on what you, you do for work, life. right? It all depends on what you do for work. The average, the average Hawaiian, the average local person cannot afford to live in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, the average like person that's born and raised here just can't afford to live yeah. here. Um, it's pretty expensive. Yeah. Only because there aren't a whole lot of like well-paying jobs for the average person here. A lot of like those condos that we were like you were talking about all get picked up by uh, international business mm -hmm, people. Mm -hmm. It's a lot exactly. of them are owned by uh, Chinese Companies, conglomerates uh, or um, people on the mainland. Uh, but yeah, it's that's the only annoying thing is that it can be difficult if you don't have a good job. You know, and, and they price you out. Yeah, and there's, and the other thing we don't have a great educational system here. And because of that, it I think it reflects the lack of like work. You know the the type of, of money that can be made here for the local man, the local person, 
because they just we're not well educated here. We're like in the bottom when it comes to educational standards in the nation. We got a lot of dumb motherfuckers that live here. Yeah, I noticed. You know, a lot of people don't. There's a certain humility too. It's, it's a little too humble to me. Some mm. of the people I'm noticing, um, they do compliment you, which is great. You know, they carve me a lot. I'm way older, but um, I mean that's nice. But at the same time, it's like there's not a lot of eye contact and. Um, there's a little like they don't. It's not. I don't see a lot of eye contact. That's particularly from the Asian women I've met. Oh, well, yeah. Asian culture. There's not a whole lot of eye contact that goes down in general. Japanese, Chinese, Korean. Uh, it's yeah. Because they're showing respect in their way, the way that they were raised, right? Uh-huh. Like for example, in Japanese culture, it was the way that I was raised at uh-huh. least. Because my grandmother that I was raised by is full Japanese, and there ain't no hugging, there ain't no kissing, there ain't no extra forms of. You know, whatever displays of love, or, like or you, just, you just know that they love you. Okay. They don't ever say it. Like I think I can count on three fingers how many times my grandmother said she loves me, but I know she does. Like it's just. Oh, that's awesome! So you're um you're mixed. Yeah, I'm a I have a quarter Japanese. Mix. I was looking at you. I was like, what is he? Because I have a fraternity brother oh, okay. who's black and Japanese. Oh, okay. And he 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 you know, he's an architect. Yeah, Blasians, Blasians have a distinct look to them. Very distinct. Sure. My, uh, one of my good friends, Dominic, was uh, black and Japanese. I think he also had Chinese. But very, very distinct like features that were, you know, you can clearly almost see the you Japanese can see it and in, the black. You can see it in you now, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you get into your face, because you can see the slant. And that's what I, that's so funny. Slant. That's always what I tell people. is like, oh, I don't see the Japanese. Like, it's in my eyes. It's in my face. At first, you think, like, like, oh, what is he? Like, he's Italian, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a little attitude. So it's like, it definitely, you know, which is great. Yeah, no. But I, it's very direct. It's not like you're nasty. You no, know, no. direct. Yeah. Um, which I think is, you know, way better than being indirect. That's sure. That's a form of non-transparency, which is asshole. You, yeah, you're basically just you, exactly pushing you being an asshole. Is exactly. It's like you want me is. to be an asshole, you? I could really show you what an asshole is. No, yeah, I'm all about, you know, you. I you like gotta that. give out the energy that you want to receive, right? So even if well, that's why you, that's curt- why you're located here too. You're yeah, like, yeah, you're in the center of town. Exactly. And they're in the outskirts. You know, they're like you know a little bit away from the wall, a little bit away from here. Mm-hmm. No, you got to be able to engage with people if you want to get anywhere. And so even more so... If you I didn't even think you guys were going to be open on Sunday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't I think that's awesome, too. Every day. Wow, that's cool. So have you ever thought about being in entertainment? Has people, have you met any model agents? I'm sure they've... That's funny. No, I mean, when I was younger, um, I had uh, one of my aunts trying to get me into to go model because there's, there's a couple of talent, uh, talent agencies here that... Will, um, yeah, you know, represent everything's so model. digital now. Yeah, yeah. No, I never did. I should have though. I had a. Well, you still can. I had an ex whose photographer, because she modeled, and her photographer kept trying to get me to model for her. And like now, she's doing really well. The photographer, I probably, I should have probably done that. But well, you still do it for guys. For guys, either really young or a um, little you know, bit older. Yeah, yeah. You, you like right now, your age group is perfect. Oh, interesting. It's all about the suits. You know, Zinnia. Uh, like, fair enough. Hugo Boss, that's the money one thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then you also have like a little youthfulness to you. So it's kind of like you go late, you know, mid to late 20s. Mm-hmm, all mm-hmm. And then that's yeah. a beer and alcohol. <laughs> and I'm sure they shoot on location here sometimes too. Yeah, they just had, uh, what's his name? Uh, or uh, Jacquin mm-hmm. uh, was just here. Why? Right, yeah. Middle of last year or something. He had his show here. That was pretty cool. Because we have a, um, we have a talent. That's one of our muses. His name is Ethan Solu, and he um, he's with Storm Models in LA. But and it's so funny, he's like six four almost, Ethan, and he oh, can do he can do freaking three sixties on surfboard. Oh, nice! So he's he's with the surf team. I know he's gonna kill me. I think it's U.S. University of California San Diego. Oh, okay. One of those. Days. I'll be messing it up. But uh, yeah, he's really good. Oh, that's cool. Good. But you guys have that same energy, and that's why I was like, God, thank God, he's a real person. <laughs> yeah. Because if I, if I meet one more asshole, I'm going to smack the shit out of him. Oh, you're lucky you didn't come But verbally, though. You're I, lucky you didn't come in here you. last night or later, like, later today, because my other co-worker, he's this old dude, and he's, he's an asshole. But he can I, write, he I love the guy. Oh, he is. Great right. tattooing. Like, he's a genuinely good person, but a bit of an asshole. I will say that. Yeah. It's just different. Yeah. Like, right. No, some but I know we can get along with assholes like that too. No, he's good when dealing with like other middle aged white men. Other oh, middle aged right. white men love him because they're just like, oh, another asshole. <laughs> it, it just works. Okay, check that out for me. 
Look at that bad boy real close. Check it out in the mirror too. Let me know if you want me to adjust perfect. anything or. It's perfect. Yeah, I think it looks pretty great. It looks fake. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks so much, Gian. Oh, of course.